Hello, I'm Lindsey Whitley, the Associate Superintendent for Communications and Community Engagement with Cumberland County Schools. Thank you so much for joining us for our Throwback Thursday edition of Cumberland Family Academy. Each week, we look forward to bringing you timely information and resources to help you help your child succeed in school and in life. Now, let's jump right into tonight's session, already in progress. so much for having us this evening and we're so happy to be here. I'd like to say that we would love to be in person. We know that's not a possibility right now. We look forward to other opportunities to meet with you in person, but we are so excited that you're here this evening and we hope that we will have a lot of ideas and information and strategies to share that will make literacy and family literacy real successful for you and your child. Remembering that as a parent, you are your child's first and most important teacher, and we're here to be partners with you in that process. So thank you so much again for joining us. Ms. Wanda, we may not be in the school, but we are partners with you parents because we're working with our teachers, our administrators, our social workers, with everyone at the school to try to make sure that you get all the information you need to help your children through this process. So exactly. we are partners, even though you may not see <laughs> us and we may not be in the same building. And we're glad to be your partners. Thank you for sharing that, Patricia. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and just start a little bit about what we hope to accomplish tonight. And uh, one of our objectives, is, first of all, is to have some fun. We want you to have fun with us tonight. But we want you to understand the definitions of literacy and what we mean by family literacy. And also, we want to help you to appreciate the importance of early literacy experiences. We want you to look at some of the strategies that we share tonight and to, to contemplate doing some of those on your own. So we hope that that will happen. And we want you to actively participate in home school partnerships. Because as we stated earlier, you are your child's first and most important teacher, but that teacher in that classroom and the school are definitely your partners. So we want to encourage you to make sure that there's a strong partnership between the home and the school. We also want to, we're gonna be sharing some literacy resources at the end of our presentation. And some of these you might be familiar with, but others may be new to you. And we want you to consider exploring all those different resources that we plan to share. Uh, we also want you to realize that if you have information, you can share it with other parents. So we will like for you to, whatever you get from this information, that you will share it with others, and especially others who are important in your child's life. It could be a, a child care provider or, or a grandparent or someone who babysits your child, but share this information with them as, as well. And as we started out at the beginning and we'll end the same way, we hope that you have fun with us tonight. And again, we know you could have been elsewhere, but we're so glad that you took time out to join us for this presentation. Thank you. Okay, so we said we we're gonna talk about the definitions of literacy and family literacy. And let's start with literacy. Everybody has their own idea of what we mean by literacy. But for our purposes tonight, literacy is the ability to read, write, speak, and listen in a way that lets us communicate effectively and also to make sense of the world. This process is fundamental to achieving in every educational subject. In other words, for math, we need literacy to be competent. To be competent in writing, we need literacy. Social studies, music, learning to play music. Everything we do involves literacy. So that is the foundation. And then we talk, when we talk about or discuss family literacy, it's a term that's used to describe parents and children learning together. And they're learning together at some home literacy activities that provide literacy building opportunities for young children. And at the same time, you're enhancing the literacy skill development in all members of the family. Now, if you research family literacy, you'll come across terms like literacy rich homes, family for focused reading, uh, strong home school communications, and all those are important in the process. So when we, we talk about literacy rich environments and homes, we'll share some things that you might have in your homes to support that literacy rich, rich environment, okay? And I don't 
know if parents are aware of the fact that with your definition of literacy, it addresses that social emotional aspect of our children. They have to learn how to talk to one another, how to get along, how to say it correctly, how to um, how their facial expressions, everything they do when they're speaking and listening to someone is literacy development. Thank you, Patricia. Now, if we're talking about literacy, we always want to start about talking about books. Now, I know as a child, there are two books that were my favorite books from my childhood. And I have those two pictures up here. And so what's special about those books, about the book sharing experience that made it special? Well, Miss Susie was a book about a little squirrel who had her own little house in the tree and she took well to good care of it. But something happened and she had to leave her home. She was forced out of her home and she had to live with other people for a while. But she was able at the end to get back to her home, to get everything back in order. And I just thought it was a beautiful story that resonated with some experiences uh, that people have in their childhood and that some that I may have experienced. So I love that book. And then The Cat in the Hat, who cannot like all those rhymes and those the imagery in the book, the things that the children experience while the cat's there and the, and the mom's away. So those two books are two of the ones that were so special to me. And what even made it even more special is that my mom read the stories to me. You got to sit on your mom's lap, cuddly, comfortable, while she read a story to you. And that's a wonderful experience for children to appreciate stories and to bond with their parents. Patricia, what about you? What about a favorite book from your childhood? For me, it wasn't from my childhood, but it was almost like you said, sitting together. My son and I, he would sit on my lap and I would read the pokey little puppy and the saggy bag eat elephant until the print came off the book. And I loved it. It was the time that we would spend together during the day, even if we read it a dozen times, but he'd always sit in my lap and we'd cuddle and we'd laugh and we'd play it out. It was just wonderful. And those are my favorites simply because I spent that time with him. Okay, awesome. I can only imagine. Now, benefits of sharing books with children. Patricia's going to talk a little bit about a little bit more about that for us today. Those, uh, books are just so wonderful. Think about it. They stimulate your imagination because they take you places you haven't been before, places you didn't know existed. It lets you develop ideas. Once you learn of something new, you try to take it a step further to get it bigger and more connected to it. And that's it. It connects you to a larger world. When I don't know there's something exciting on the other side of that mountain and I find it, then I become part of a larger community. It gives them a sense of security. Sometimes we read things that they're unaware of that at times could have been scary. And now they feel comfortable. They understand the concept of the idea. And sometimes too, it provides us as parents when, we, when we're reading the story and we see the reaction to be able to gain that sense of security. We may have been aware, unaware that they did think there was a monster under their bed. Yeah. And now we can clarify that by reading a story and then developing it and asking questions. And then it's, it forms one of the most positive memories of time spent with you. Our time here is limited and the time we spend with one another needs to be rich and wonderful and encouraging. And that does it with you and your children taking time. Well, the family sitting down and reading like this man is here, everybody getting along, turning all the TVs off, the phones, and just spending that quiet time with just reading and enjoying the time together. Thank you. Now we're gonna share some tips for reading with young children. And just going back to what we shared just previously, I know that you can probably think of even more reasons why it's great to share books and stories with your children. Uh, but that some of the tips that we have here are one, to choose great books. Choose books that interest the children. And then not only do you wanna choose books that interest the children, you want to expose them to different types of books, fiction books, nonfiction books, Children love to learn about different parts of the world, geography books. So just come up with a variety of books, but choose great books. And that's, that's a great place to start. And as we already mentioned, you want to sit close and make it comfortable while you're reading or book sharing with your child. And there are a few strategies that make it even more impressive or fun for the kids when you preview the book. And sometimes as adults, we might want to preview the book without the child being there. So we'll know what's going on and we're comfortable in the process with them. 
but you can also uh, let them look at the cover and guess what's going to happen and things like that. Look at the pictures and make their predictions about the stories. Now, one thing about reading, we're often, often competing with more exciting things that children think are more exciting than they do. So when our reading time, we, we're gonna have to put on the show. We're gonna have to read with expression. We're gonna use gestures and, and props and all those extra things just to get, to get their attention so they can appreciate the process. So not just boring monotone reading to your child, they will run away. So you're gonna have to make it fun. And you also want to read slowly so that they can absorb what you're saying. They can listen to how the words are pronounced and they can actually watch while you're reading and make up, pick up some of the words. So read slowly. You want to point to pictures so they can see where the pictures connect to the story. And eventually they'll even look at the pictures on their own if they can't read and tell you the story just based on the pictures. And again, we said, let them predict what's going to happen. They'll get excited at the end when they find out, oh, I was right. And they maybe even be surprised when they found out, oh, I didn't see the story turning out that way. But either way, let them predict, help, help them predict what's going to happen. And that may make you ask a few questions like that. What do you think is going to happen? Or why do you think he's under that table? You know, things like that. So get them involved in the story and connect the story to life. If the story is about a farm, Remind the child of the time you took a trip to the farm or the, the he took or your child took a trip to the farm or just connect the story to real life things that they're exposed to and they know about. You want to point to the words and the letters because, again, it's a literacy activity. And as they see that words make up the sentences and the letters make up the words, they're learning and enjoying the story at the same time. And finally, keep it fun. Play sing, even act out stories. One of my fondest memories as a child was a story that was acted out uh, before I could even read that well. It was a, a lion and the mouse. And we got to act out the story. You get a chance to play the little mouse free and the lion. And it, it just cements the actual story in your mind a little better. So act out the stories and have fun. My favorite story with my students to act out was Three Billy Goats Gruff. And when the monster would go over the bridge, trip, trap, trip, trap, we get so dramatic. It was like we were in on a TV show. And also, parents, some book, books are wordless books. Nice. They don't have any words. They are wonderful because as you look at the pictures, you get to develop a new story every time you read it. So don't be afraid when you pick up a book <laughs> and it doesn't have any words. It's just as exciting as those other great books with words. Now, making literacy a family affair, we can do that by surrounding our child with books from the library and making sure everybody gets a library card. That's a great place to start. Uh, also, you can find books at libraries. Uh, they have like sales at the library. You can also get them from the Salvation Army, Goodwill, yard sales. Just create a, an inviting library area at your home. And you can help your child decorate a little corner for the books to be and just make it pleasing. Uh, letting your child choose which books to read. And we, we talked about that a little bit already, but making sure that they have an input into the books that they're reading. Oftentimes we find out that children just seem to love dinosaurs. So if they wanna read a bunch of dinosaur books, let them read the dinosaur books. Choosing books in your home language. And that is if you speak a different language. And that's so important because if you're comfortable telling a story or reading a story in your home language, your child will appreciate it. So don't try to uh, use another language if that's not comfortable for you, because we want this experience to be fun with, for you and the child. Finding a comfortable place and make book sharing a special time. You may do it a special time of the week or a special time of the day when everything, all the other distractions are put away. And it's just you and your child or the family reading together. It could be on the back porch, it could be in the living room, it could be in the car. And that adds up to the next one, taking books with you in the car or on the bus. Your children are often saying, how long is it going to be before we get there? How much longer? But if you have maybe some engaging books in the car to keep their attention, that's a wonderful thing to do. And finally, and also, we definitely want to be a positive literacy role model. Let your child see you read. And we read all the time. Sometimes we're not even aware it comes so naturally to us. But if we point it out as we're reading, uh, look, this gas tank says you have to do this. All these little things that we do every day will help them see the importance of learning to read and the importance of reading. Reading the newspaper, 
reading your newspaper while they're reading their book or doing their homework so they can see the importance of literacy. And again, we want to provide challenging yet achievable literacy experiences. Uh, so this way come into play with your relationship with the school and your child's teacher, knowing what level they're reading on so that you can challenge them, but not challenging to the point where they don't wanna read anymore because it's so difficult. So with, with the younger ones, they're not even reading yet. So forcing them to read when they're not ready can be uh, a, a problem. So you wanna make sure that you challenge your children but you want to make sure that it's, it's fun and it's achievable because we want them to be successful. We don't want to turn them off. Patricia? And then there's five skills, the top five, because there are other skills on that, but need it to become a great reader. And that's first one is phonemic awareness. Knows, knowing how language sounds. Think about it. When we go back to in your own language, it's great. You can hear it in your own language and you can hear it in your second language. It helps you develop those skills because you're hearing. Phonics, knowledge of how letters represent sounds. Children don't understand that. They see to them as scribble scrabble and all of a sudden now they know that letter makes a sound. That's the kind of puts all those letters together, have a word. It's so it's eye opening for them. Vocabulary, knowledge of words and what they mean. Oh, how exciting. Fluency, the ability to read accurately and quickly. And then comprehension, the ability to understand what you read. Okay, so phonemic awareness, knowing, knowing how that language sounds, that spoken words. Parents, you can help them so much by playing with sounds in all parts of the words, the beginning, the middle, and the end. When, as I told you before, when we would go trip, trap, trip, trap, they're hearing the beginning, the middle, the end of all that, putting it together, pulling out rhyming words in a song, rap, poems, and nursery rhymes. They love it. Play a game to see who can come up with three words that rhyme the fastest. With, yeah, did I read that right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's part of comprehension. Phonics, knowledge of how the letters represent sounds, that written word. We can look up words on signs, cereal boxes, money. This is a neat, the neatest thing I've seen with this, with the environmental print has been to be able yeah. to go to those places, go to Burger King, ask them for something with Burger King on it, go to Taco Bell, go to McDonald's mm -hmm. and then cut it out, <laughs> put it on a ring. And that is your alphabet book, so to speak, with print they've seen that they look at all the time, the stop sign, take a picture of it. It's a great word, way for them to learn. Point out words to your child whenever you see them. It doesn't, you're not quizzing them. You're just saying, oh my gosh, look, I just stopped at a stop sign. How cool is that? Say them out loud. For example, walk or don't walk on the crossing light at the corner. Make sure they understand and can hear everything they're seeing. Third is vocabulary, that knowledge of words and what they mean. That is word power. Parents, talk to children. Teach them new words just they learn by hearing you talk. Every time you say something, they should be the ones saying, what does that mean, mom? What does that mean, dad? Yeah. <laughs> and get excited about it. And you'll hear them using it pretty soon too. Point out the new words on television and in music, appropriate new words in television and in music. Give children the names of, of things such as colors and animals. Miss um, Wanda put this picture in here because we have a little visitor to our building who he's three. And he actually told us what that was. And we were like, no kidding. But he knew the word to that, which is not coming to mind right now, Ms. Wanda. Hitch. Trailer Thanks. hitch. <laughs> Trailer hitch. He knew that because he listened to the, per the adult that goes with him that has a trailer hitch and mm -hmm. takes them on little grocery runs with the trailer rich hitch. So he knew it was exciting for him. Next. Fluency, that ability to read quickly. That's to read smoothly and easily. So read with your child regularly. Take turns reading. You're going to say, my child doesn't know how to read. If you've read the story before, they will read to you what they remember and what they'll read the pictures. Yeah. And that's the beginning of exciting reading. Listen to them read. Listen to them read and just let them tell you whatever they feel like on that page. And then help them practice reading. That's important for them. And comprehension, you gotta know what it's all about. So talk to your child, 
ask questions, ask what we call open-ended questions, not just yes or no questions. What do you, where do you think that red car on the right side of us is going? Oh, in the book, what do you think the bird was thinking by the facial expression? So ask a lot of questions and listen to them. And another thing with the comprehension, Patricia, is that, and that we have that little picture on there, technology has been so helpful in so many ways. We can look up things that we don't understand. I know as an adult, I'm always on there looking up something that I've heard on television or that I read about just to find a little bit more information about it. So that's a fun thing that you and your child can do together. She's like, what does so-and-so mean? And says, well, let's look it up together. So it, it's just the, um, a lot of different resources that we have to make learning and comprehension fun. And when we talk about our five skills, lots of times we will find that a child can read the words to us so clearly, so beautifully, but they don't understand what they read. So what we want to do is just to work the, as hard as we can as a, as a family and as a parent to talk to them, to get them to ask, to ask them those questions so that we can not only know that they read beautifully, but they understand what they read. Okay, so this next video is a video of a conversation with a dad, and it, you just watch it and you'll see what's going on here. What you're going to see is the father and the son exchanging words and having a real intense conversation going back and forth. But what's going to be so neat about it is when you listen to it, you will see that the father is engaging with his son, actively engaging with his son and probably has no clue of what the little baby is saying, <laughs> but he's letting the baby, he's giving him the eye contact, he's acknowledging his words, he's giving, he's waiting, giving him time, the baby time to say what he has to say before he jumps in and says what he has to say, and it is a beautiful conversation. Did you understand it though? Yeah. No. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> uh -huh. Oh, no, not, not this one. This is, this is the grand finale of this. Okay, the last one? Yeah, that's the last one. That's what I was wondering. I don't know what they're going to do next season because they did some stuff this time. Exactly what I was thinking. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, don't bring that again. You know what I'm saying? Don't do the same stuff. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I was thinking that, yeah. Yeah. Like go somewhere else with that, but don't break it here, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's what I said. And then he was like, ah, you know what I'm saying? And I was like, what in the world? But don't do that here, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Really? I thought the same thing. <laughs> we think a lot alike, huh? <laughs> That's crazy. Right. I think my favorite part of this video, if everybody watches, is that the baby actually has a waiting game going with his dad. Yes. He knows he has to wait for his dad when his dad talks and he turns around and he looks at him and, and waits and talks back. It, it's just, it's just precious. You may think this is crazy, but I know once I found out I was having a baby, I read at loud, I read storybooks so that my baby could hear them. So it's never too early to start your literacy program with your child. I am so glad you shared that because research shows it that's so important and it's a, it's a great place to start. Ms. Wanda, I actually shared family stories too. I told my without knowing if it was a boy or girl, I would keep telling them, well, this is how your grandparents are and who they are and where they came from. I just talked and talked constantly to him. Thank you. So uh, let's talk about some essential story time strategies to practice at home. Picture talk. Before reading a book, you want to look at the picture on the front of the cover, read the title and ask, what do you think this story is about? And look at the pictures throughout the book and occasionally ask, well, what, do you, what do you think is happening? What do you think is going on now? What do you think will happen next? And these are some strategies that you can practice at home with your child with any book that you're reading. And it just helps them to learn new vocabulary and also helps them comprehend what's going on in the story. 
And all this reinforces what we've already shared, but these are different you know, ways of sharing the same thing. Chime time. And chime time is one that I'm sure you've done before and you probably love doing it and your children love doing it. But after reading a book several times and realize you probably will be reading the favorite book several times, when you, you pause, when you come to rhyming words or repetitive phrases or words that are easy to predict and let the child chime in, they'll say uh, whatever the rhyming word is, they'll say it because they know it's coming. So it's like chiming in, helping them be a part of the story and sharing what's coming next. Um, we, uh, there's so many books that lend themselves to that so easily. Um, so that's just one of the, one of the uh, strategies that's important. And it helps with fluency. It helps with vocabulary building. And it helps with comprehension. When they come up what's coming up next, you kind of get a good indication that they understand what's happening in the story. And then the final one, tell it again. After reading a book many times, which we said you will be doing, ask your child to tell the story back to you. Start at the beginning of the book. Have the child retell the story by looking at the pictures. And you may need to help a little bit by saying, uh, tell me what happened on this page. Telling the story from the middle, I mean, from the beginning to the middle to the end helps them see how things pro progress and proceed. And that gives them a strategy as far as building the vocabulary and comprehension. Again, telling the story, and they can tell their own stories. We'll talk about that a little bit. But if you ask them to tell you a story about what happened in school today, what happened first thing in the morning? Oh, I went in and I put my books up. Okay, what happened after that? Oh, then we went to circle or center time or, or whatever is going on in the classroom. And then what happened next? So they can see that things happen in a sequence and tell you what's going to happen next and create their own little story. So I encourage them to do that. And that's an aspect of real life that they need to understand early. There's a sequence of events in your life and some lead to consequences. So good or bad. So they need they start learning that through literacy. And as Patricia was sharing earlier, how she would tell her child about her parents or grandparents or other people who are important to you and your family. You can even create a picture book, gather old pictures of different family members, uh, grandparents, uncles, aunts, and come up with a little book telling about them. And that, that's really a personal storytelling thing that the child will appreciate and see that they're part of something bigger. That they are a part of something bigger. Uh, think out loud when you, when, when you, about when you were little. What did you do? I know, I know many of us have heard those stories that our parents told. I had to walk 10 miles to school. But make a story out of something that happened, like a family trip, a birthday party, or when you lost your first tooth. And I like, I love to share a story about my niece when she lost one of her teeth. She lost, actually lost the tooth. She misplaced it. And she wrote in her own little handwriting a note under her pillow to the fairy saying, I lost the tooth, but could you please leave the money and I will bring the tooth back when I find it. I'm like, wow, <laughs> being creative and writing. So think about things that happened when you were little and share those with your child. They will really appreciate it. Have your child tell you stories about what she or she has done on special days, surprise, uh, surprise events, holidays, birthday parties, family vacations. Let them tell you, let them talk to you about those things. And if you go on a trip, draw pictures with your child and tell a new story. Invent new stories, trips like going to the library. You can make up a story about that, a story about a trip to the park. But that storytelling is a form of, you can write the story down, you can talk about the story, but all of these are, are literacy activities that help uh, enhance literacy skills. Writing to support family literacy. Oh, I love that first one. I used to do that to mine. Leaving notes in the lunchbox or taping them to the refrigerator leaving notes in the bedroom, in the bathroom, anything that they can learn to read and want to read because they're curious, why would a note be taped to the, to, next to the refrigerator or in the bathroom? It, it gets them started on that reading adventure. Encourage children to send notes, thank you notes when they get a gift shows such gratitude. Plus it helps them develop that writing skill and the understanding of what it is to treat another person with consideration helping them send texts and emails. Um, this is so easy to do and they enjoy it. And we do encourage you to make sure when you are teaching them these skills to use the proper writing 
or the proper spelling of it. Because sometimes as adults, we get so used to using um, short words or short letters for something. But with the text and emails, we encourage them to write. Let's use the proper writing skills uh, and um, punctuation. Write letters to grandparents. Can you imagine a grandparent getting a letter from their grandchild? Oh, my gosh. Miss Wanda got excited about her niece's letter, and she still has it. That's because it was a letter written by a child, and it doesn't matter if it's perfect. We understand. We, we love them, and we will understand whatever they write down. Help with the grocery and the shopping list. They love doing this. Absolutely. So they get to do that through just learning by when they buy the groceries. Have them check off the list. Encourage them. So we've given you a lot of different tips and strategies to in increase or enhance family literacy or literacy activities at home. We wanted to go a little further and give you some resources that, again, you might be aware of or you might not, but we wanted to share those with you. The first one, we'll just reiterate what we said begin at the beginning. That home school communication is a great place to start. Your child's teacher is a wonderful resource. So we would love to encourage you to uh, make sure that partnership is working because both of you have one person's interest in mind and you both are concerned about that child. So working together is a great place to start. And this little picture reminds me of how important it is to check those backpacks, check the notes in the backpack, see what's going on, make sure that uh, you're communicating back and forth to the school and turning in things that may be missing or reading any notes that may be particular to you that you might need to be aware of. So that homeschool partnership is so important. And also, um, initially, we had uh, one of our partners who helped prepare, put this uh, presentation together. She couldn't be with us as we present, uh, but Miss Carrie Elkins is a media coordinator at one of our schools at Cliffdale. And she, media people are a great resource for our students as well and our families. So that's another place, your child's media center. And the public libraries. They have a tons of wonderful programs. We started out at the beginning telling you about when they have like the book sales, you can get free books or inexpensive books there. One thing that we might not know, or you might not know is that they've waived all of your old late fees that you may have had. You may be staying away from the library because you, you still have books overdue or that you need to uh, pay for. But that's all, your slate is clean. So I would encourage you to go to the library, get a library card for your child. Uh, you might even wanna do a library scavenger hunt or, or a, a trail where you can go and see where everything is and help your child do that as well. The children's section, the story times, uh, the media activities that they have available for you to check out. So make sure your, your library is your friend and they have a lot of uh, resources for you, online resources that will be very helpful too. Uh, there's a program, Libby, which is a, Libby is a free app where you can borrow digital books. So we wanted to make sure you knew about that and it's free. You can use it on your Chromebooks, your phones, your tablet, and again, no late fees. So this is a wonderful resource for families to enhance literacy at home. You do have to have your library card. So it's a great opportunity to go get your <laughs> library card and that of your children. Back to the library. Yes. Thank you. We have, a, most of you may be familiar, if not, we want to let you know about the Dolly Parton Imagination Library. We've had that program in our county for several years where little children up to age five can get their own free book mailed to their house once a month. So this is a wonderful way of creating a library at home, no expense to you, and the children are so happy to get their own mail, their own book. So they look forward to getting that book and uh, it's free. And it's through the uh, Dolly Parton Imagination Library. So make sure you look up, look into that. And it says up to under age five, that's babies on up. They can, you can sign your children up for the books. We also wanted to share about a story walk. If you're familiar with Clark Park in Fayetteville, there's a story walk. There's a trail where you can go along the trail and read excerpts from a book along the way. They're mounted and you'll just stop and read and exercise and walk and read a little bit more. So that's a wonderful family adventure where you're incorporating exercise and, and hanging out together as well as literacy all in one place. And that again, is free of charge. 
our neighborhoods, if you've looked around town, you've seen a lot of these little free libraries popping up all over the place. They are a place where you can just go and get a book, take a book or leave a book, share a book. And these are beautifully colored and they're in places where, you know, children might walk by or families might gather. I I recently saw one across from Seabrook Park, Uh, just a wonderful way to include literacy in the outdoors and giving everybody an opportunity. You may not be able to get to the library, but here's one right in your neighborhood where you can go and share and and leave books. So that's another resource for literacy. So if we can play this. Go ahead, Wanda. Okay, so um, our access to our Ready Rosie program, if we can play this video, you'll get to see a little bit about this and I can tell you uh, a little bit more once we're done with the video. You see how on this envelope I have your name written? Triangle. Triangle. And then on these cards, I have the letters together. And I'm going to show you how to put them in order, okay? Okay, I got Let's see the first letter. Here, let mommy put this down for you. N A O N E. Here's the bill. Okay, which letter is first? And which letter is this? A. Which letter is this? O. Which letter is this? N. Which letter is last? E. That's right. You want to sing the song with me? Yes. N A O N E. N A O N E. N A O N E. Naomi is your name. All right. I'm going to mix it up. Yeah. And I'm going to have you put these letters in order for your name. And first, I want you to find the N. Where's the N? Okay. Which letter comes next? What letter is that? Uh, Where's the A? Okay. Which letter is next? Hey, Chuck. What letter is that? Uh, yes. Which letter comes after the O? What letter is this? Uh, What's the last letter? <clears throat> What's the letter called? Yes, good job. Good job helping me put your name in order. Want to sing the song one last time? N A O N E N A O N E N Okay, so the Ready Rosie is a program that we have available to all of our Cumberland County Schools pre-kindergarten families. It's a wonderful program wherein they receive a video every Monday with information on uh, family literacy and activities that they can do with their children. And what's so cool about it, you saw how short this video is. Well, the videos are short, but they're packed with a lot of information to help parents. And they also, can they give parents strategies on how to make it a little more compl- complicated for the child if it's too simple and how to make it less complicated if it's too hard for the child. And it lets the parent understand what is being taught in each video. So you don't have to be a teacher to know what's the best way to teach your child because this, ro- this program, Ready Rosie, is a wonderful resource. And you see here, the parent worked with the child's name and, and playing with letters. And we all, all know that A child's name is one of the first words and things that they need to learn and that's important to them. So the Ready Rosie is a wonderful resource that we have for our parents and our our children in our pre-kindergarten program. And they also provide you videos for babies and toddlers so that you can see how you can do some of the same things but at their level and at their age appropriate activities. Now we've come to the part in our presentation where we really want to kind of 
uh, look at what we've already talked about, but to get you to commit to it. And I know most of this you are already doing. We know that. We just want to reinforce it and just to be able to just target a few things. There are a lot of other things that may be important, but these are just a few that we wanted to uh, go over and say that we we're going to commit to this together. I read to my child with joy and enthusiasm every day. As a parent, I have lots and lots of books around my home. And if I don't, I know where to get them. I give my child books as presents for birthdays, religious holidays, etc., so she can feel that books are, are as much fun as toys. I encourage other family members like grandparents, aunts and uncles to do the same. And my child often sees me reading books, newspapers, magazines, letters, greeting cards, and so on, so that they can see that I value reading. My child has a special place for her books and I have a healthy attitude toward reading. I visit the library often with my child and while there, I may stay and read a book to my child, join in a parent story time session or just let my child choose books to take home. I keep some extra books in the car for my child to look at if she gets bored while we're driving. And I turn off the TV or radio so that there are no distractions while I'm reading to my child. And finally, I let my child climb into my lap while we're reading or else I cuddle up next to her. So we are physically close while reading. I think we can all commit to that. A couple of resources, additional resources, uh, adult literacy resources, because you know sometimes as parents, we feel uncomfortable that we're not reading where we'd like to be. And as we work with our child, we want to improve our own skills as well. So there are classes offered in areas of reading, uh, math, general education, English as a second language. And I've listed two agencies that I know are wonderful local agencies and it's free for you as an adult if you want to continue your education, if you want to work on your GED or uh, improve your English language skills. We have Fable Tech Community College and we also have the Fable Urban Ministry. If you need any additional information about either of those, feel free to reach out to us. And Patricia, finally. Learning to love to, to read starts at an early age and often starts at home. If families make the effort to encourage, support, and engage in all aspects of literacy in their homes, children and family members will enjoy reading and writing together for the rest of their lives. Wow, that was a great session. Thank you so much for joining us this evening for our Throwback Thursday Cumberland Family Academy session. Each week, we look forward to bringing you information and resources. So if you enjoyed watching tonight's session, be sure to visit our website at www.familyacademy.ccs.k12.nc.us. There, you will find additional sessions and information and even resources to help you help your child in school and in life. Thank you again for joining us.